Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Matthew O'Dell, the Technical Marketing Manager at FileMaker, and I'm excited to be your host for today's web seminar on essential design principles. Today's seminar is based on material from FileMaker's newly released Design Interaction Guide. We're also joined today by the author, Dr. Don LeVan, who is the founder of Vanguard Custom Software, and will be doing today's live demonstration. But before we get started, I have some brief housekeeping notes. For the best experience, we strongly recommend that you participate in this web seminar with at least a broadband connection. If you have any problems or require online assistance at any time, please contact Citrix Technical Support at 888-259-8414. Again, that number is 888-259-8414. During today's presentation, we will also have uh, an opportunity to take questions. So let's briefly uh, talk about how you can enter a question. Go to the control panel, click on the questions section, and then type in your question and hit send. We will cover as many questions as time allows at the end of our presentation. Now I'd like to introduce Dr. Don LeVan, the founder and lead designer of Vanguard Custom Software. Dr. LeVan is an experienced designer who helps business owners create exceptional software and user experiences. A recognized FileMaker expert, Dr. LeVan is hi was hired to provide consulting to FileMaker on the design of the starter solutions and many of the features used by FileMaker developers. In addition to being a sought after speaker at the FileMaker Developers Conference, Pause on Air conferences, and other software industry events, Dr. LeVan also offers a three-day experiential design studio in which he provides training in the software design principles and processes that are the foundation of Vanguard's proven design work. So without further ado, I'd like to hand things over to Dr. Don LeVan. Don, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you, Matt. All right. Let's get started. Good design is what we're going to be talking about today. And there are three things that, in my view, make up good design. The first and most important thing is that good design addresses the user's goals. Goals are the reason for the things that we're building. We're trying to enable people to achieve their goals in specific situations that they need to operate their businesses. Good design addresses the user goals and is usable. So usable means that the solution helps the user accomplish what they want to be able to do, that they can figure out how to do it, that it's easy and efficient, and that's where we're going to spend most of our time today. And lastly, good design is aesthetically pleasing. The design is really important because successful designs can help people achieve big goals and solve big problems and save money. In contrast, unsuccessful designs can really waste time and money and cause users to feel frustrated and annoyed. And I'll give you one quick example that I can think of very clearly. I did a, a redesign last year for a company that will remain nameless, but there were 115 um, customer services representatives sitting on phone banks, and they were using a solution that had a dashboard screen and a list view and a detail view. And every time a customer would call, they would have to select the customer. But to go from the detail screen, they had to go back to the dashboard to select the customer. Just moving the select customer um, dialog button from the, the dashboard screen into a pop-down list, say 15 seconds every time one of the CSRs performed this action. Well, just that 15-second savings is going to save this company $500,000 over the course of a year. Design matters. So today you're going to learn the key principles of interaction design. We're going to focus on simple, actionable strategies you can use to create more usable FileMaker Pro interfaces, and specifically how to make interfaces easy to learn and efficient to use. Now, I structured the presentation that way and the guide that way because there are really two different types of users that you're addressing. The, the new users who you have to gently onboard into your solution, help them figure out how to get around, how to learn, how to accomplish the things they want to do. And then once they've learned it, 
how to be as efficient as possible so that they can get their jobs done, so they can accomplish the goals that we're trying to help enable them to accomplish as quickly and as efficiently as possible. And we're going to spend time and talk about each uh, the principles for each of these separately. So let's start with make it easy to learn. You can help people learn to use your application by designing your interfaces to explain themselves, by providing clear and responsive feedback, and providing navigation elements which orient and direct your users. And I'm going to go through each of these high-level points in detail, and they are further spelled out in detail in the guide. So let's start with the first one. Design your interfaces to explain yourself. When people uh, encounter a new piece of software, the way they try to figure out how it works is exactly what any of you would do when you arrive in a new town or get to a new building or encounter a new experience, which is you scan the environment, you look around for things that are familiar to you, for things that you can recognize. And you draw on your past learning, on your internal mental models, to make sense of the things that you're encountering new. It's the same when people are starting to use your software. They will open up the solution, and they will start to scan to find the things that they can recognize, the things that they can um, that will trigger past learning and their internal models of how the world works and how software works. And so you want to design your interface so that they explain themselves, so that people can recognize the patterns that they're familiar with. And to do that, one of the things that you're going to do right off the bat is you're going to use visual formatting to differentiate interactive elements from non-interactive elements. In any solution, there are some elements that are, that are clickable, that are interable, that are editable, and those are different than the ones that are not. So uh, fields, portals, uh, all of these things, buttons, those are interactive elements. Labels, text strings, those are non-interactive. And you want your user to be able to tell immediately upon looking what's interactive and what's not. So if you look at this group of fields, they're the same four fields, and some of them could be interval and some of them not, and you can't tell necessarily. Um, I mean, at this point, it looks like the four on the left are interactive and the four at the right are not. Now, I'm not talking about doing this. I'm not talking about applying colors willy-nilly. But I'm talking about being specific and conscious and making choices about how you communicate. Your software, your interfaces are establishing a conversation between you and the people that are using it. And so you want to speak clearly so that they can understand. So. In this example, the Dev Contigo application last year, the, the designer was very conscious in using uh, just one color blue to indicate everything that's interactive. And everything that's not interactive was in grays or blacks. And so while there's, there's no three-dimensional shading or gradients to vary um, what's been called a flat design, uh, there's a great deal of clarity here as to what what's interactive and what's not and there's so as you are designing you want to take advantage of the themes and styles a filemaker introduced the ability to create and save and utilize custom themes uh, and styles last year in filemaker 13 and in doing so the themes that ship with filemaker provide um, a couple of clear styles to help you start to make the differentiation. So most of them have a default, a minimal edit, and a read-only. Those can help you start to distinguish um, what's editable from what's not, what's interactive from what's not. And as you make decisions, as you format a particular element in one way, for example, a string of text or a label, every time you use a similar element in a similar way, Go ahead and use the, the style that you already created so that you're developing a style guide as you make decisions. Now, as I mentioned before, um, when earlier in the life of people using computers, it was necessary to use a lot of very heavy visual formatting, uh, gradients, Moyer patterns, and others to communicate 
what was interactive because it was hard to see on the screen. Now that we've got retina screens and people are really used to using computers and touch devices, it's not necessary to be that heavy handed. So you want to use the minimal visual formatting necessary. And you can see an example of that in this screenshot from InkPad designed by the Proof Group where they've just used a little bit of formatting in the, the shading of the gray and the, the ellipses after the inquire and the right facing chevron after the learn more to indicate that those are buttons and differentiate them from everything else. Icons can be a really great tool to help people um, learn how to use your interfaces and they can enable recognition memory. But most icons are not iconic, not truly iconic. So you want to make sure that if you're using an icon that may take some learning, that you prepare it, you pair it at the beginning with a text label. Later, so the first couple interfaces that people encounter, most likely you're going to want to use icons with text labels. And then if you show the same icons again in a smaller way, in a, in a smaller subset of functionality later in the interface, you might be able to drop the text and just use the icon because they've already learned the meaning, they've already associated the icon with the text and then they can draw on recognition learning. The next thing that you want to do to make your interfaces really easy to learn is to provide clear and responsive feedback. As you're walking through life, every action that you take is followed by a reaction. As you take a step, you feel your foot hit the ground. You feel the impact of your foot on the ground. You feel the sound of the ground under your shoe. It's the reason they spend so much time uh, with Foley artists with making movies to add in all those sounds of the footfalls, of the door squeaking, of the keys rattling that don't necessarily get picked up by the mics to enable the world to feel realistic. So, so in software, you want to make sure that every action is followed by an understandable and expected reaction. FileMaker gives you a number of ways to do this now. You can use the object display state styling, you can use conditional formatting, you can use merge variable, variables, and you can use custom dialogues. So in the example on the screen, uh, there's a, a formatting difference between the normal object state and the pressed object state. And it's just very subtle, but there's enough to let somebody know that they've taken an action. So to use the object state styling,